today we're going to take all this stuff on the table over there and we're going to make ourselves a little solar power backup station. Let's check it out. All right, folks, welcome back. So today we're going to take all the stuff that you see on the counter here. We're going to turn it into a little portable rolling backup solar generator. Um, this will actually be a solar generator because there's going to be a panel that goes along with it. I'm going to take you through the steps. We're going to do the steps a little bit at a time, take the steps on how to do this. It's actually very, very simple. A lot of folks think that uh, doing stuff with solar requires some vast electrical knowledge or anything like that. It really doesn't. It's really pretty simple, very easy to do. Um, you just have to follow a few basic rules. Now, I'm going to explain the project to you right here real quick. Uh, this is an old battery box. I've had this battery box since probably about 2003. It used to live under my radio table with an inverter there and a 12-volt plug for my, um, my ham radio stuff. If the power went out, I'd just switch the inverter on, turn on the power plug, plug in my gear, and it could work. That's why it was on wheels, so I could roll it around as well. And the wheels are already on this. I put them on years ago. I have drilled holes for where I'm going to put my inverter up top here. Okay, so some of this stuff's been done already, um, just for the sake of time, you know, and for the sake of planning the video out so you guys don't have to watch a boring video. <laughs> I've already done some of this for you, so you can see how it works. Now, I understand that not everybody's going to have a lithium iron phosphate battery lying around or a really nice charge control lying around. This can be done with anything. The components in this setup aren't important. What's important is the principles of how we're going to do it. We're going to take a folding solar panel and with some conversion connectors, with some MC4 connectors and stuff, we're going to connect this system up and to have some solar power. So we'll have solar battery backup. And it is really this simple. Now, I mean, the lithium iron phosphate battery. Okay, yeah, that's a three, $400 battery. You don't need that. You can just go to Walmart, pay 90 bucks and get a deep cycle battery. It's all up to you. This is just stuff I had lying around. The inverter is an older Xantrex 1000 uh, watt inverter. I actually bought it in Costco years ago. I want to say 2009. Um, bought it in Costco for 90 bucks. So they probably the technology has probably advanced a lot since then. Regardless, it's what I got. I have my uh, POWMR, my Power Mr. Uh, MPPT charge controller that we're going to mount on the side here. I have some connectors, some cable for my uh, solar panels. I do have a little voltage meter and I have some extra cable there. I believe that's 10 gauge cable. Carry about 30 amps. I'm not looking to power the whole house on this. I'm looking to just power it up enough. So the first thing we're going to do is drop the battery inside and kind of get an idea of the size and where we're going to put our components. If you can see inside here, I know it's kind of dark because I don't have a light directed into it, but if you can see inside here you can see the fact that I put a little bit of rubber down. Okay. Underneath here is just the screws, and some of them got battery acid on them over the years. But <laughs> they're the screws that hold the wheels in, and they're in there good. They're not going to fall out. Uh, so we're just going to put this down here, just as a little bit of a cushion for the battery. I don't want it sitting on those uh, all the whole time it's in there. The battery itself is fairly light. Let me move some of this out of the way so we can get going on this. Fairly light, uh, about 25, 26 pounds. But that's because it's a lithium iron phosphate. So we're going to just stick that right in there. And I'm going to put it this way as much as possible because I already have some holes drilled for previous stuff that I did with this. And we're going to need to use those holes to have some room and some air for the battery. Uh, one of the things is it's going to be where the input for the solar comes in. So I'm going to take that hole and screw that on there. This used to be where wires ran. We're not going to use that for anything other than just running the wire down and into it. So that's going to stay the same as it is. We're just going to take the wire from the inverter, the wire from the charge control, mount it on the side, and run it in there. Now, the screws, of course, because this is a tight fit with this battery, the screws, of course, are going to have to be trimmed down. We'll get a Dremel tool and we'll cut them down. That's no big deal. Once they're in there, we can do that. So let's get started with the first thing. The first thing we're going to do is put this connector in there so we can connect our solar panel to our charge controller and then to our battery. Okay, so real simple. I just screwed that in. That's one of the reasons I'm using a plastic box. I just took the screws that came with this connector, screwed them all in there. This is, of course, going to run out to the charge controller. Now, some people are going to say, well, we'll just use a bigger box. Why are you sticking the charge controller on the side of the thing? Well, the reason for that is because we're building with what we have. I was going to throw this box out. Now, I'm repurposing it and making a useful tool out of it. So that's why we're doing it this way. This is going to run right outside here, right to the charge control that will be mounted here. 
Now this came with brackets, and what did I do? Like any good prepper, put them in a safe place and can't find them anymore. So I made my own. <laughs> okay, I have my own homemade brackets on this one. They're going to be just some uh, strapping that uh, we use for AC units. Get out of there. I have it in here, in all my parts. I kind of planned this out a little bit, like I said, so I don't bore you guys with thinking this stuff out while I'm doing it on the, on the video. So what I got here, I can't see, it. where is it? There it is. Okay. These little guys here, I just folded them like little brackets. This is what they look like. I cut them with a Dremel, folded them in half like little brackets. They'll mount on the side here and mount that to the side there. Now, some people are going to think, well, that's going to get side heavy. It's not because you're going to have the battery and the inverter in here. So it won't get heavy. The inverter is going to mount on the top, like I said. So what we're going to do is I'm going to mount this up, okay, along the side here. And remember, we've got to leave a little space for the battery. Now, another thing, too, that I ran into, and again, just doing it by the seat of your pants, just doing it on the fly. You see those screws in there? Can you see them? I don't know if you can see them. They're in here sticking out too far. So we're going to cut those down so they don't interfere with my, uh, my operation. And also, I don't want to cut my hand every time I stick them in there. We're going to cut those down. We're going to cut down the screws that go in here because they need to be a little smaller for these brackets and mount it up. So let me cut those down and show you what it looks like when it's all finished. I'll put the light inside so you can see. All right, really quick. You can see I've cut them back past this part here so they won't be interfering with the battery. And of course, this is going to get pulled a whole lot tighter out of here and the battery will be able to fit in there a whole lot better. All right, let's mount the inverter, I mean the charge control, on the side of this unit and get going from there. I just wanted to bring you back really quick to show you what we're doing here. We're just bending these little pieces here on here like that. They start out like this. I put them halfway in my vise. I push and I get that. So I'm making myself some makeshift brackets. Again, this is totally about doing this with what I have, not waiting for the parts to come in from Amazon or going shopping for them. Let's finish this up. Alright, so we got our brackets on our charge controller. They're ready to be mounted on top. I did scratch it a little bit, so I shot a little paint over there to touch up the paint on it. Um, not really a big deal. I just wanted to look nice when it was done. Uh, but, but we will mount the inverter now on top of here right up on top of here with the holes I've already drilled out and get that done while we're waiting for that paint to dry and then we'll mount the charge controller right on the side then what we're going to do is trim the inside all the screws that might be a little too long don't want them to bump into the battery and we'll wire this whole thing up alright so I clearance checked this on top here it's all set nothing of the terminals the screws are anywhere near the battery terminals I just wanted to make sure I put the battery in here to take a look there. there we go now I'm kind of lucky with this one this is a maintenance-free battery. I'm not going to be needing to put water or anything in it. So when I seal this up, I'm probably never going to open it again until I replace the battery 10 years from now. So pretty much that's going to be it. However, if you do need to rebuild your battery and replace it, maybe you don't want to put your inverter on top. It might be a little too heavy. might be uncomfortable to take on and off. Regardless, that's how we did it with this. Now, next up, we're going to mount the charge control along the side here. And again, if I had a bigger box, I'd mount everything inside. But it's a little bit hard to do that. So we're going to mount the charge control along the side, and then we'll wire everything up. All right, my idea worked. The little brackets work perfectly on there. It's on there good, as you can tell. Now what we're going to do here is run the wire coming out of the side there into our plus and minus, because that's going to be off our panel. And then we're going to run these wires back inside here. Again, it would have been nice if I had a bigger box where I could have, uh, you know, maybe set it up so that it wasn't outside here, maybe it'd be on the inside. But you know what, too, I realized I don't even really need a meter on this because this is going to tell me the state of my battery at all times. So I'm really not complaining about it. All right, let me wire this up, drop in the battery, because that will give it some stability, too, because right now it wants to tip over that way. And then we'll wire in the inverter, and we'll actually test this thing out under load. We're going to try it out. We're going to plug in that. We're going to plug in the panel to that, to this, and charge up the battery and see how it works. All right, so now I have the input from my solar panels, which will be coming in here. Okay, into my charge controller. Now my charge controller is going to run out to the battery here and here, back through here and up in here. Okay. For those of you who don't know what a charge controller is, you're brand new to solar, whatever, a charge controller will keep your batteries from getting overcharged or discharged at night during you know, the nighttime where the panel could leak out. Kind of adds a resistive load so, that the, so the battery doesn't backbeat through the panel and discharge your battery. So, that's what they do. Basically, they will keep it at a consistent rate. And an MPPT charge controller happens to be a better one. They make the PWN ones as well. That would work for a project like this, don't get me wrong. 
this is just a little bit of a higher end one. You could build this with, you know, under $100, honestly, if you, were, if you want to do a smaller battery and a different type of battery, cheaper charge control, maybe a smaller inverter, you could do this much cheaper. Now, for those of you wondering what the inverter is, the inverter changes your uh, DC current to uh, AC current to DC current. In other words, your DC coming off the battery turns into AC and you can plug stuff in, like a wall current. So basically that's what we're doing now. I did decide not to add the meter. Reason being is this is going to be my meter. What the heck do I need another one for? Don't need it to be fancy. We're building this just for bare bones basic. I'm probably going to keep this and use it in a different project. Um, Lord knows i got a ton of battery boxes and stuff I can use it in. So I'll probably use it in a different project. But I really don't need it. It's kind of excessive and stupid, you know, to have something draining the power all the time. So we're just going to go with that as a meter. That one that will light up. It's an LCD screen. And it will tell you what kind of charge you're getting in, the state of the battery, and all that. So now we're going to run wires off of here to these terminals. And I'm also going to run wires off the inverter to these terminals. And we're going to finish up. Now I do have an inline fuse coming for the battery, for the uh, terminals that are going up here. Okay? It isn't here yet. We're going to wire it in after the fact. Just pretend it's fused. <laughs> okay? For today's uses, since this is going to go at heavy rotation, heavy use right away, um, you should always fuse your connections both from the battery you know, and from the, uh, your uh, inverter. So that's coming. It's just not going to be in the video today because I just didn't get it yet. So let's finish this up and wire it up to the battery. All right, we are hooked up and live. So we have the charge control running now. We will plug in a panel to test that out in a little bit. Um, we have the charge control live. Now we're going to wire up the inverter, same cables, same stuff, running through the same hole there, and see what kind of a project we can come up with just throwing together stuff that I had lying around. All right, bring you back in a minute. And there you go, the finished project. All that's required for me to do now is tuck these cables in here, put this on top. You'll notice the charge control is lit up. Inverter is ready to go. It did have a little bit of a discharge when I connected it to the red wire. This packs quite a punch after you unhook it. So you want to unhook it, turn it on, and let it completely run out. The, there'll be a little bit of a capacitive charge in there. Anyway, I'm going to clean up my mess. We're going to tuck this top back in here. And then we're going to put this outside and charge it while I clean up from my, uh, my mess making here. We're going to try this thing out. Now, if you notice in the battery box, they always have this little section here. We're not going to use that. I'm just going to run them underneath like this. Should work just fine. Again, this is a very quick, very simple, very easy project. Nothing has to be fancy on it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And they're tucked underneath, and it's ready to go. Let's turn on the inverter really quick. I don't know if you can see the green light. Oh, let me move you up. There you go. There's the green light. So we are getting power. Let's put it on the charger and put it outside. And again, I'm just going to roll it out there for a little bit and see how it charges while I clean up my mess here. And uh, we'll see what kind of charge we get off it. All right, it's plugged in. It is working. Getting about 72 watts, 74 watts. Not the greatest amount of sun coming in. But again, again, I just had the panel just kind of thrown against my garbage pail over there. As you can see over there. So it's not perfect. But hey, you know what? I built myself a backup... Uh, little emergency power system here with just stuff I had lying around and if I need to I have a thousand watts of power on tap up here in my inverter so I'm gonna let this charge up a little bit while I'm out here I got a big mess to clean back up on my table as you can probably tell and I'll bring you back when it's charged up for a while and we'll see what we're getting for readings all right so it's done it's built you see it wasn't that difficult it's not perfect far from it there's the other things I could have added. There's better things I could have done. But it was what, what I had on hand right now that I could put together and make myself a backup power system. And this will blow away 99% of what you're going to buy for four or $500 on the Internet. All right, so let's take a quick reading. I definitely want to take a reading and see where we were at. That's your minus. That's your plus. We are showing 13.18. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. 13.18 it started at 12.8 so I'm not complaining about that it was out there for what half an hour or so while I kind of cleaned up my table here so definitely pleased with that so far by the way folks if you're interested in setting this up I do have the link to the battery down below that power queen life po 4 battery very good deal on it right now um, you can definitely save some money with that uh, I don't have a link to the Xantrax inverter because well I bought this probably 12 years ago <laughs> so 
I don't have that link anymore. And uh, this you can find over on Banggood. So all in all, definitely nice little project. Very easy to put together. Gives you some emergency power. And again, you don't have to use any of these components. You can do this much, much simpler with smaller components, maybe in a smaller ammo box. But it shows you how easy it is to put together something like this. And this here will blow away a good 80% of the solar generators you see on Amazon and a long lasting power than what they give you. So, and it's a homemade project. You get to do it yourself, save some money. Um, again, this was a more expensive one because I do YouTube and I get stuff and I put it to good use. But you don't have to do it that way. You can do this with a, you know, just a inexpensive deep cycle battery you get from Walmart for 90 bucks and a 600 watt inverter, say, and maybe a cheap $14 charge control. The whole idea is to get out there, try some projects, get your mind working in that mindset of preparedness and doing for yourself because we are going to be on our own if things get any worse than they're getting. Uh, I feel we're going to be on our own, you know, through a lot of this disaster heading our way. So uh, that's how you don't worry about rolling blackouts and power outages because you've got something ready to go if you need it. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Do give a thumbs up to the video if you like it. Don't forget to leave a comment down below if you're interested in anything here. I can answer any questions. Don't forget to check out our links. We have our Amazon affiliate store down below, our freeze-dried wholesaler link. Uh, that link down there, okay, is can save you 15% on any of the food he has down there. Um, definitely check it out. You definitely want to get in on getting some food right now. And the link, without doing anything, just clicking it, will save you 15%. He's got some really good stuff there. We have our My Patriot Supply link. We have a three-month deal right now going. Three months worth of storage food, $150 off. Very affordable. And below that is our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. You can check out Thrive without joining anything. If you just want to order some food and try it out, you sure can. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.